Good morning, Christ the Rock. We're so happy to have you here for our online worship this week. Uh, this is a special week for us because we are taking a day to celebrate the life and ministry of our lead pastor, Kurt Drexler, before he retires on Monday, tomorrow. Um, we're just so thrilled to be able to take this time and just acknowledge what an impact he's had on all of us. So I'm uh, glad you're here for that. And we are doing something new here in the building. And if you want to attend in a 100% masked environment, the loft is open here so you can worship with other people. Uh, but if you're someone who needs or wants to be masked, uh, we have that space for you now. And if you want to know what's happening at Christ the Rock in general, you can always look on our website for our online bulletin. It's christtherock.org slash bulletin. And that has everything about the upcoming Thanksgiving meal, uh, services, and we're starting a new uh, sermon series next week about the book of Revelation. So um, you can find out a little bit about that too. And um, we're so glad you're here and we can't wait to worship together. We are so glad that you are here this morning, whether online or in person. Psalms 135 says, Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Celebrate his lovely name and music. So would you all please stand and join us as we worship our King this morning. Let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things.
captive and break every chain oh god you have done great things we dance in your freedom awaken alive oh jesus our savior your name lifting high oh god you have done great so worthy to be praised. Amen. Worthy of every song we could ever sing.
church, God is worthy to be praised, amen. Let's sing this chorus of I Exalt Thee. all of the glory and the honor for you are worthy of our praise we are so thankful for your promises that you give to us and the love that you lavish on us I just pray that you just continue to be in the space and minister to us And 
their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations in your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around that word amen it means let it be so or I agree and so I want to read you this passage out of scripture that we just uh, heard sung over us by the worship team in numbers 6 it says the Lord bless you and keep you the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace and if you agree with that scripture let's God as God's people let's all together say amen Amen. Well, hey, thank you so much for worshiping with us. Our God is good. Amen. Amen. All right, go ahead and take a seat. And for those of you joining us online, thanks so much for being with us. If you don't know me, my name is Ben, and I am one of the pastors here at Christ the Rock. And uh, man, I am just so thankful for today and everything that's happening. But I do want to let you know about a couple of things that are coming up. One is next week, we are starting our brand new sermon series called The Seven Letters of Revelation. Um, So just imagine if Jesus had written you a letter, or imagine he'd written our church a letter, what would he say? What would, he, what would he want us to know? What would he be excited about? What would he be frustrated about? What would he encourage us with? Well, uh, though he hasn't written a letter maybe directly to our church, we see these seven letters in the book of Revelation that help us see the heart of Christ for his church and for his people. And so it's an incredible uh, study. We're going to do that together starting next week, so don't miss it. And uh, this last Wednesday, I got to hang out with our student ministries, and then my son is a part of Breakout, which is part of our children's ministry. And uh, I just got to see uh, in action uh, throughout the week, there are so many different ministries that are blessing people in our church and through our church. 
And uh, I think about all the people who serve to make those things happen. I'm so thankful for the volunteers who give of their time here at Christ the Rock. I think about all the people who pray regularly uh, for uh, the ministries of our church, that God's kingdom would come and his will would be done in those ministries as it is in heaven. And then I think about uh, the way that so many of our people generously give to see those things move forward. And so I wanna thank you for living and giving generously. It makes a huge impact when we, when we do those things. And uh, here at Christ the Rock, we believe that our giving isn't just as a way that we can help see the mission move forward, but it's also part of our relationship with God. It's an act of worship that we all participate in. And uh, we maybe participate at different levels, but no matter how you're giving, I just wanna say thank you so much uh, for faithfully doing that. And what I wanna do is pray over the offering. And uh, you, if you're giving today, you could give uh, online, you can give via text, you can give in person here uh, in the boxes at the back, or you can even mail in your giving. And so we wanted to let you know about those different ways that you can participate. But what I'd like to do is pray over that offering, but I'd also like to pray over the rest of today's service because it is a special service. So would you pray with me? Father, uh, first of all, I just wanna thank you for your people and your presence that is with us. God, that you uh, have set your face upon us. Jesus, that you came to be with us, God in flesh, so that we could know that you are truly Emmanuel, God with us. So thank you for being with us, Lord. And uh, as people give uh, this week, we just wanna pray that you would bless those gifts, Lord, that they would, uh, they would multiply in ways that we could never even imagine. God, both here in the Fox Valley and all around the world through the many ministry partners that we partner with and through Christ the Rock Online. And so I just want to thank you for everything you're doing in and through your people. And uh, Lord, we just thank you for this service. Uh, God, I pray that you'd be with us uh, for this time, that you would put a special blessing uh, on this time that we're going to share together. And we pray this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, Today is a very different kind of service. Uh, today, we, as many of you know, we are going to be honoring Pastor Kurt and uh, the many years of service that he has given here at Christ the Rock as a staff pastor, most of that time being uh, an executive pastor at our church, but then for the last four years being our lead pastor, stepping in after a very difficult season, after Bill's death, and uh, just leading us through these last uh, four years. And uh, so we're going to honor uh, that today. Now, I also wanted to let you know that we were going to be installing Pastor Joel as our new lead pastor today as well. But as many of you have already heard, uh, last week our guest speaker uh, was tested positive for COVID. Now, I do want to let you know that before, uh, before that, like when he spoke, uh, he nor the rest of us had any idea that he had COVID. Uh, he was actually very convinced of the opposite. And so, um, so it was a hard reality for us to deal with when we heard the news, but our staff has responded accordingly, uh, really brilliantly. And uh, I'm just so proud of our staff for the way that they've responded. Uh, many of our staff have chosen to quarantine because of that. And Pastor Joel is one of those people that chose to do that because of COVID exposure. He was around Bob quite a bit last weekend. And uh, if, you, if you know Bob, uh, to be around Bob means that you definitely get exposed to some things. And um, so, yeah, it's just, I love him, man. That's just who he is. So, uh, so Pastor Joel, after talking with church leadership, did decide to uh, stay at home, and he will be here next weekend, uh, all things considered, and uh, right now he's not showing any symptoms of COVID, so we pray that that continues, and we will install him next weekend. I also want you to be praying for Bob and Carol, uh, as they're both uh, just going through the symptoms of COVID. Um, also, anybody else who has been exposed and is experiencing those symptoms, please just be lifting them up in your prayers, and know that next Next weekend, we will be uh, having that time in our service where we will uh, welcome Pastor Joel as our new lead pastor. Now, that does beg the question, does that leave us leaderless for a week? <laughs> like, for the next week, we all just do whatever we want, right? Um, 
No, uh, truth be told, uh, this is a good time for us to look at the leadership structure we have in place here at Christ the Rock. See, at Christ the Rock, we have what is called a plurality of elders who leads our church. We are an elder-led church. And so we have elders th from throughout the body, uh, most of them not being staff members, who lead our church in every single season, uh, regardless of who the lead pastor is. And so, uh, so I want you to be praying for our elders uh, through all of the uh, changes and transitions that will continue to go on over the next few weeks. And uh, these men are men of integrity who continue to lead our church. And so we are never without leadership. But also, let's not forget that as the body of Christ, we are part of the global church who is, had, who is headed by uh, Jesus himself, Christ. And so we are never without leadership when we are part of the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. And so uh, our elder team is charged with certain responsibilities, and one of those responsibilities is to install new lead pastors, and so they'll be doing that next weekend, but it's also their responsibility to honor um, a lead pastor who is retiring and moving into the next season that God has for him. And uh, I, I, I want to mention the fact that the Bible tells us that the, the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. And so though Pastor Kurt might be retiring from this position, he's not retiring from his calling. The calling on his life is irrevocable. So in whatever season he finds himself in next, he will continue to fulfill God's call on his life. And so what the elders are going to be doing today is uh, they're going to be honoring the service that he's had here, but they're also going to be commissioning he and Marion into what God has for them in this next season. And uh, so you'll be seeing that happen later in today's service. You'll see all our elders come up. They will pray over Kurt and Marion. Um, and also, before that, you're going to hear from Pastor Kurt. He's going to share his heart with us for the church family. And I am just so excited for you to hear that message and to hear from him. Uh, but before all of that happens, we have what I think is a pretty fun uh, treat for all of us. Uh, for some of you who've been around for a long time, this is going to take you in the way back machine. It's going to take you down memory lane. Uh, for some of you, you're just going to learn some things about our church history that you never knew were part of it. And uh, so to me, this is a really fun treat for all of us. So we're going to hear from Pastor Kurt in a few moments, but before we do that, let's all watch this video together. Kurt began following Jesus as a young adult. He and Marion had been married for five years when he attended a Bible study in Oshkosh. He accepted Christ at that Bible study, and his life changed forever. And God has used his life to influence so many of us. In his 20s, Kurt worked at a bike shop in Oshkosh called Vern's. Kurt was involved in many facets of running a business and quickly became the manager. In 1982, Kurt and Marion attended a service held at Riverside Chapel in Appleton, where a ministry called Solid Rock had begun holding services. At that time, the church was known as the New Corinthian Chapel, and Solid Rock operated a street outreach and suicide hotline. After outgrowing the tiny chapel, the church moved to the Viking Theater in downtown Appleton in 1983, where Kurt and Marion became members. As his faith deepened, in 1987, he became the host of the Good Morning Fox Valley radio program on WEMI, where his gifts of encouragement, teaching, and pastoring impacted people all across the valley. At that time, Kurt became a deacon and later an elder for the church. It was evident to Bill and Bob Lenz that Kurt's skills and gifts were needed for the church, which by then had changed its name to Christ the Rock Community Church and Solid Rock Ministries, which later became Life Promotions. On this corner right here, walking across the street, Bill was standing there outside of the old offices, and that's where he first invited me to come on staff back in 1987. And I laughed at him walking across the street, thinking he wasn't serious. He said, why don't you? quit their radio station and come work for us. And I remember saying something, laughing at him going across the street, but I'm getting paid where I'm working now. So uh, you finally got suckered into it. I did get suckered into it, but I never regretted a moment. Well, maybe a moment. <laughs> In 1988, Kurt came on staff for both organizations as the business manager, overseeing finances and operations. A month later, Marion also joined Kurt on staff serving as the receptionist, covering the lifeline, and volunteering with our lay counseling team. 
As Kurt brought order and planning to ministry work, he also led the purchasing and renovations of all of the locations over the years. As the church continued to grow, Kurt, Bill, and other leaders were determined that space wouldn't prevent anyone from hearing the gospel. For Kurt, a theme would emerge over the next two decades. As the church grew, Kurt would bring vision, organization, and planning to God's plans. He provided oversight to purchase buildings and led staff and volunteer teams in construction and renovation. The driving mission for these moves was always that more people could hear the good news of Jesus Christ. Although Kurt's impact was often very visible in brick and mortar ways, his shepherd's heart was always a major part of his ministry. More than just the task at hand, he is always equally or more interested in developing the spiritual lives of the people around him. Kurt's vision and ideas led to the creation of classes and leadership trainings, developing volunteer teams to ensure integrity and transparency in our operations as a nonprofit. He also led stewardship campaigns that helped create space for more people to be discipled in Christ. His character is perhaps shown the most in times of adversity. He led our church family and staff through many difficult times, especially the death of our founding pastor, Bill Lenz, in 2017. Modeling his leadership after Jesus, Kurt's first action is seeking God in prayer during times of hardship. He's an unfailingly humble man and a man of tremendous courage. Kurt was willing to step into many situations when others couldn't or wouldn't. Although he and Marion were unable to have children of their own, this church is, in many ways, their legacy. He's been a father figure to so many, both on staff and in his personal life, investing in the next generation. In addition to formal ministry, Kurt also volunteers with Catch a Dream, which offers hunting expeditions for terminally ill kids. More than just the excitement of hunting, kids get to hear about Jesus' love for them, the highest, most consistent priority in everything Kurt does. Kurt has always seen himself as part of a team with all of us in the church. If you've spent any time around Kurt, you've no doubt heard him share his vision. All people matter to God. His desire is to see the community of saints working together to make known the name of Jesus Christ. We are so grateful for his and Marion's life of service to our church family and for every unseen hour of sweat, tears, and prayer. We look forward to seeing how Pastor Kurt continues to follow Jesus after his formal ministry has come to an end. We thank you, Pastor Kurt, and we thank God for your years of service here at Christ the Rock. goodness sakes. (laughs) A lot of time has passed. A lot of memories. I'm so glad that we have things like video that can help us remember things that we've forgotten. (laughs) And I've forgotten so much. (laughs) But memories are so important because they take us from yesterday to tomorrow. As it was said uh, in the video that It was 1987 when I was standing on one side of College Avenue and Bill was on the other side. And when he yelled across and said, why don't you come work for Solid Rock and the church? And even though it was Bill's words, I could hear God's voice. Many times over the years, I thought, why did I say yes? (laughs) But more often I thought, what would have I missed if I'd said no? I've been flooded with memories the past few months as we've prepared for this day. Every folder I went through reminded me of things that I and we were going through at the time. A lot of those memories were great, but many were not. So was life for all of us. 
The next time you're looking for a devotion, I want to encourage you, do a word study. A word study on the word remember and the phrase, do not forget. On a day-to-day -day basis, uh, we typically just need to remember to uh, <laughs> brush our teeth, put gas in the car. Oh yeah, and don't forget to pick up the kids. <laughs> but for a Christ follower, memories take on a greater significance. They are the very lifeblood of our faith. They remind us that we are not alone in what this life is supposed to be about. Marion has been watching me prepare for this day for years. <laughs> Recently, she sent me a uh, video, just emailed it to me, and I unexpectedly or naively thought, oh, cool, I just click on it in my office and watch it. But for the next three minutes and 40 seconds, I went from thinking, what do I have to go at, get done next to overwhelming gratitude and worship. That was a blubbering mess. If anybody walked in, I'm assuming they thought I was losing my mind. The song is titled as Remember to Remember. Here's the chorus. Remember the way I led you to the top of the highest mountain. Remember the way I carried you <laughs> through the deepest dark. Remember my promises for every step on the road ahead. Look where you've been and where you are going. Look where we've been and where we are going. And remember to remember. These are the things that we can't forget. On this day and every day to follow us, we must remember where we have been fraught, brought from. We need to remember where he is leading us to, and we need to remember that we don't go alone. That's what God was trying to say to Joshua when he said, this is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. I have to admit, I've been trying to remember that these days. But it's my prayer for you. Through the years, I would typically tell stories of the church by walking people through the physical locations that we've occupied over the years. It seemed fitting somehow. It would give you an idea of what we felt God was doing at that time in our life. But now I know that uh, locations weren't unimportant, but they weren't most important. What was most important was you. I've had this amazing seat to see and be part of many of your lives. Even standing here right now, I don't just see faces. I see story after story after story after story. I've lived long enough now to know some of you from the time you were born to now that you have kids of your own. <laughs> that kind of span of life is full of many hills and many valleys. But the gift in having been around so long is having had a front row seat. A front row seat to witness the greatest miracle the world can ever know. The transformation of a human heart. Things like transformation, reconciliation, and restoration can only happen through the actual intervention of God himself. Most of us spend our entire life trying to change, I mean really change, to no avail, until finally we give up, we step aside, and he does what only he can do. He recreates what he originally designed. There is nothing else like that on the face of this earth. And we have seen this miracle happen thousands of times over these few brief decades. One of my favorite metaphors in the Bible for the church is the bride. We represent the bride that Jesus will someday return to collect. Until that day, we're to do our best to continually 
make her more beautiful than she was when we found her. That's the transformation I have been able to see with each passing year, you becoming more whole, more free, more beautiful. What an incredible privilege. This is the story of us that I will tell for the rest of my life. Through the years, the greatest impact in my life hasn't come from speakers, preachers, or authors. The greatest moments and words of impact have come from you. So, I want to share a short story with you during the last few minutes I have with you. I first wrote this story uh, to the staff uh, more than 20 years ago. I wrote it to them then to encourage them and to remind them to stay the course. I don't honestly remember all the circumstances of that day, but we had many of those times. I ran into the story again a few weeks ago when I was cleaning out my files. And so as I rewrote it, I thought, or reread it, I thought this applies to you. So I thought fitting that I would share it with you today. And the reason is because I believe that this leadership transition that we're marking today is much bigger than simply a shift in some staff positions. Today represents a generational transition, an opportunity for the church to be propelled forward, not by one person or a few staff, but by the entire body. Our last sermon series was entitled, Come Together. Our mission statement starts with the important word, together. So this story is a reminder from the past intended for our future, written from the perspective of one of our volunteers who got it. So I want you to listen closely because this wasn't just simply written to our staff 20 years ago. I believe this was also written for you today. I've been helping out lately, doing some night cleaning in your offices. I don't think most of you even know that I'm doing it and I kind of like it that way. You wouldn't believe the kind of stuff I run across when I'm just picking up a few things. You leave behind at the end of the day more than you think. And it's more than just unfinished work or paper in your garbage can. You leave feelings behind. Or maybe impressions would be a better word. Sometimes it feels like I can almost hear your thoughts. Now don't worry. I'm not going through your things. It's just that some of you leave your calendars and to-do lists right out on your desk. I don't go looking for it, but sometimes my eyes catch a line on a page that gets my imagination working overtime. You guys are so busy. I don't know how you keep things straight. Well, yesterday, I found a crumpled up note that missed the garbage can. I wouldn't have bothered to unwrinkle it, but the word why was visible despite the attempt to hide its content. When I opened it up, there were these simple words. Why should we bother to keep trying? I've been praying about what's been going on to make you feel that way. It made me sad to think that that thought was deep enough to travel from your brain through your heart and out your fingers. It must have felt, or maybe it still does, very real and deep. So, if you don't mind, I want to take a crack at answering your honest question. Why should you bother? Because others died to give you this chance. As deeply and as personal as this life, this war feels to you, there is something much bigger going on. You are this generation's link from the past to the next, a vital link in a luminous chain that began to be built soon after the first shot was fired under the shade of that tree in the garden. For the first time, we began to doubt did you watch the news last night? If that was your only source of truth, you would have to conclude that the war had already been lost. There was no longer any reason for hope. You might as well surrender and take whatever you can get. But I know you know better. You know that there is more to this story than what people are hearing and seeing. So did those who have come before you. You see, you have access to hope because of the cloud of witness, witnesses who are cheering you on now. 
The stories of their lives remind us that death does not have the final say. They died while they were giving their lives. They were just ordinary people who drew strength, courage, and perspective from hearing the stories of those who had gone before them. Despite their frailty, they kept the flame of faith and truth alive. Alive not only for their generation, but so that they would be able to stretch out their hand and heart across time and hand it off to you. You now have it in your hand and heart because they didn't give up. They were as concerned for you as for those who died at their sides. This is their legacy. And it's now your responsibility. You must continue to bother because small battles can turn the tide of a war. Have you ever heard someone say of a football game, a baseball game, or any game for that matter, they lost it in the final seconds? If only they would have made that last shot, caught that last pass, or slid a split second sooner, they would have pulled it off. But truthfully, games or wars are never won or lost in the closing moments, but in moments that are played or fought throughout the contest. The world keeps score by what they can see and hear, but they don't have your vantage point. Think for a moment about the security clearance that you've been given. Because of where you sit most days, you see the casualties of war that few others see. From those who are temporarily bruised to those who are scarred for life. You see them so often that you can forget the privilege it is to be led into their broken worlds. And because you see and deal with so many, you can, if you're not careful, begin to see them as categories of wounds instead of souls. Put the gunshot over there, those missing limbs in the next room, and leave the hopeless by the door. Lives are not changed by category, of course, but by individual personal touch. Wars are not won in one fight, but through the accumulation of victories in seemingly insignificant battles. Those battles, the very things that you do every day, are won by being faithful with every task and every conversation that comes your way. You get to see and be involved in the beginning of countless skirmishes. Every one of them matters, whether you see the victory or not. You need to bother because you have been gifted for this war. When is the last time you thought about your spiritual gifts? I mean, really thought about them. It's probably a little like the last time you thought about your hand or your foot or your nose. As long as they're working and not causing you pain, you're just happy that they're there when you need them. Familiarity can be a thief. It breeds a sense of monotony a numbing of your mind, heart, and eventually your soul. If unchecked, it can lead to ambivalence and despair. You begin to lose your own sense of awe. When was the last time you thanked God for your gifts? I don't mean thanked him like you thanked somebody who bought you lunch, but I mean thanked him from the bottom of your soul. Each of you should be walking around every day with a sense of humility and wonder at what God has called you to and equipped you for. You deserved death, and instead he reached down from heaven, cleansed you, and endowed you with the characteristics and abilities of his very own. It should cause, cause us all to worship. From the vantage point of heaven... From creation to the final battle, he chose to place you on this earth to be his hands and feet, to put you in this body of believers and gave you exactly what we needed. The whole point of the gifts, of course, is that they would be given so that you could use them for others and for his glory. Without you, everyone suffers. I don't mean to sound like a preacher. It's just that when I close my eyes and think of all of you, I'm filled with an almost indescribable sense of gratitude. Look for yourself. Look around this room. Think for a moment about who and what you represent. The church is the world's last and only hope, and you represent that bride. 
you represent all the sacrifice of the saints that served before you and the hope of the saints to come. For this place and this point in history, you represent the promise that if we stay together, the church will be the force that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. So why should you bother? <laughs> because we were made for this and the work's not done. Each of us have a choice about how we will spend the years that represent our one and only life. So my question is, how are you going to spend the rest of yours? Joel, you're supposed to be here next to me. I know that God knew that in advance and has you instead sitting there on the couch. I just want to say how much I love you, how much I believe in you. The first time we met, you were serving Mary and I as a waiter. <laughs> and you had a really cool bling you know, all over you. That was just a foreshadowing of what God had called you to now. For then you waited on people for dinner, but now you are a servant leader. I've had the privilege of watching you grow in your leadership from a boy to the man you are now, to see you become a husband, a father, and now one of our main leaders in the church. I do believe that God has called you. I do believe that he has gifted you and he has placed incredible people at your side. So words I needed to remember every day and I'm going to tell you for as long as I can remember, do not do this alone. We're to do this together. And I told you in person and I remind you now, you can call any time. I just might not answer. <laughs> I plan to spend a lot of time in the tree in this fall. <laughs> I love you, Joel. And before I close, I can't close without saying, Marion, God knew what each of us needed because he knew what the road ahead was going to look like. The sacrifices you've made because of the choices I've made are immense. Not only what I have not been able to finish in ministry, I don't know if I'd still be alive without you. So thank you for your grace and your mercy and being my partner. In a few minutes, the elders and you are going to pray for us. However, as one of my last acts in my role, I want to pray for you. I do every day. I will continue to do that every day. But I want to pray over you right now. So if you would bow your heads. Father, what a gift that you would call us into existence as a church. And you did that with every individual after individual after individual. And not only did you call, but you have equipped and you have been there through every high and every low. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over this body, your representation, this local representation here on earth. We are far from the only church. We are not the best church, but we are yours. Father, I plead the blood of Christ to protect every single soul who is here, who watching online, and all we represent. I pray for your, pray for your anointing 
that the gifts that you have given us would continue to grow, the passion that you placed in our hearts from the very beginning would continue to be strong. And I pray that whenever somebody mentions the word Christ the Rock Community Church, the first image that they will see is you. There is no greater compliment that we could have. So Father, I pray that you will have your way in and through this body in the years to come. May we make you proud. I pray in Jesus' name. Now there are many things that will probably need to change over the next months and years to follow in order for us to continue to be relevant and responsive to a world in need. But there are some, some things that won't change. God's call on your life, his design for his church, and my love for you. Thank you for letting me serve with and for you all. I love you. Hi, I'm Kevin Kelly. I'm one of the elders and I'm one of the pastors on staff. And as Kurt, we want to let you, well, as he just did, <laughs> he'll be the first to tell you that he could not have been able to do what he's done all these years without the love, the support, the encouragement, and the feedback he's received from Marion, his wife and best friend. Marion, would you come forward at this time? I'd ask any of our elders who are able to be with us this morning to also come forward. And as your church family, we want you to know that you leave this role with our full support and blessing. Thank you. As we pray for Kurt and Mary and now, I would ask that as a visible sign of God's continued blessing upon their lives. If you're willing to extend a hand, please do so as we enter into a time of prayer for them. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for these servants you have blessed us with. They have loved and served our body well. Thank you for leading Kurt into the executive pastor role, overseeing the operation and finances of this church, your church, for 29 years, and being our lead pastor these four plus years. Under your guidance, he has led us through some of the darkest times Christ the Rock has faced. And we are so thankful and grateful for his leadership, faithfulness, love, his prayers for us, tears, and his friendship. We'd ask you give Kurt and Marion a season of rest. May you refresh their souls, their bodies, and their spirits. May they sense and know your delight in them. May you comfort and guide Kurt in his future days as they will look very different from what he's known. May you orchestrate what this next season of life looks like for them, providing for their every need. May you give them continued opportunities to share the love of Christ with those who cross their paths and help every one of us remember that all people matter to you. We ask these things in the great name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen. Could we visibly thank Kurt and Marion?
Let's give it up for Pastor Kurt and Marion one more time. Man, God is so good. And it is so good that he raises up leaders in the church. Ephesians 4 says that he raises up leaders in the church as a gift to the church. It's literally what he calls leaders that he gives us. And what's so interesting to me is that every leader is imperfect in the church. Every leader is flawed because we have a perfect leader in Christ. And yet he hung the mission of God by a string when he passed it off to frail human beings that they would go on to do his work and to lead his church with the help of the Holy Spirit. And Pastor Kurt and Marion are living examples of that to all of us, that they have finished well in this role. Uh, There's a statistic that there are many pastors who don't retire as pastors. And so this is a historic day for us as a church to be able to honor Pastor Kurt and Marion and uh, their service here at Christ the Rock. The Bible says, give honor where honor is due. And so I want to encourage you to be able to go out into the lobby after the service. Uh, You'll be able to have many ways that you can honor and thank Pastor Kurt and Marion. Uh, you, you could just walk up to them and talk to them and just tell them the impact that they have made in your life. We also have notes available that you can fill out and we'll make sure that those get to them. If you're online, uh, you can actually, uh, we're going to put an address that you can send a note to and in the comments and you can always send a note there. We'll make sure that gets to Pastor Kurt and Marion. Um, also, there's a picture board out there. So if, uh, if the video wasn't enough and you want to take another hike down memory lane, you can go check out the picture board, which of course shows us many highlights of Pastor Kurt's ministry, but uh, it also shows us the story of Christ the Rock Community Church, and more than that, the story of Jesus working through a local group of people to reach many thousands with the hope of Jesus Christ. And so I want to encourage you, those are different ways that you can connect with Pastor Kurt and Marion and honor them today. Uh, Let's also continue to pray for them as they are moving into a season that, uh, as Pastor Kevin said, is going to look very different for them. And so make sure you keep them in your prayers to remember them. And um, also, if you need prayer, if you're saying... There's things going on in my life today that I need prayer for. Our prayer ministry team is going to be down front online. You can just say, hey, I need prayer. And we've got prayer partners in the chat as well. Uh, Not only that, if you're looking for a place to connect here at the church, if you're saying, hey, I'd love to know more and get more involved, we have our link, which is out in the lobby. Uh, You can go there after service and get connected. Uh, Online, you could just say, hey, I'd love to get connected. And we will make sure you get connected there as well. Now, I want to remind you that next week, we are going to have a moment where we welcome Pastor Joel as our new lead pastor, and we're also going to start our series called The Seven Letters of Revelation. So I don't want you to miss that, so make sure you are back next week, both here in the room and online for that. But thanks for being a part of today's special service, honoring Pastor Kurt and the work that God has done in and through him within this church body. Make sure you take some time to honor and thank he and Marion today. But God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us, and we'll see you next time. Have a great week.